in the last video I was talking about application debugging and application tracing um, and I was um, I showed you how to use the um, the step into how to step into your code how to check to uh, make sure that um, how to check the sequence in which your codes are actually executing so in this video I mean I've created a very small uh, code to show you how to use it because I said I was going to be talking about it in the future but um, I couldn't sleep <laughs> so I think I should just show you now so what happened is um, I've created a drop down list uh, and um, I'm adding high temp to it when the page loads so I place it inside the page dot is post back um, page properties so that uh, is only binded to the drop down list the first time the page loads I'm sure you understand what that does now uh, so but what I want to do is I want to use a method don't worry if you don't understand how to write methods we're gonna get into those so um, now I write a small method so what this small method is is going to add the value of x into the let me show you what it looks like now uh, let me show you what it looks like so that um, you have an idea of what I'm trying to do at the moment the drop down list only have um, zero value of zero zeros 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 inside so but what I want to achieve is I want to have the value of one two three and four so um, because I wrote the code even though I know what I'm doing even though I know that uh, the statement after a return st any statement after a ret return statement would not be executed but just to sh demonstrate to you how to use the step uh, into your uh, step over or how to use it the debugging feature of your uh, visual web developer so what I do is um, I'll show you just like I said in the last video if you set a breakpoint here on line 27 and uh, you run you run your application uh, it's going to show you the steps in which your application codes are debugging so let's check what is going on so if I click on step into you can see that's the line that will be executed then because it needs to call this method this method the add item so that it can add the item into the uh, drop down list so that's why it jumps from here all the way to this method so now it jumps to this method it goes to this curly bracket to see that this is the opening of the uh, method then it executes this line of code and you can see if I place my cursor there it said s is zero you can see the value of x here to be zero so watch what happen when I step into the code again you know normally it's supposed to go to this code right it's supposed to execute the len next line of code it doesn't because um, after a return statement nothing is ex executed but let's imagine that you do, you never knew that that after a return statement a method is terminated uh, then this will give you a clue why your application is not working properly so no matter how much many tries because now uh, is is going to execute this line of code now let's um, go through it returns the value of what's the value of XA again we can see that the value of XA again is still zero so and um, that's not what we want because um, what I did is to say return X then had one to the value of X so that the next time you come around the value of X will be two that's exactly what I wanted to achieve but as you can see it never uh, executes this line of code so you jump back to the end of the method and same thing we go on and that's why we get uh, that's why we get this zero 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 and uh, actually let me show you where I initiated the value of X I initiated the value of X at the top I said X zero but um, I want to add okay this is the way it's supposed to work at the top it says X equals to zero 
initiated the value of x then it jumps to this method then method says add item it comes to the add item it says oh where x equals to zero it return zero then he had one to the value of x then it comes to the next one it say add item it jumps here to look for the value of add item which is supposed to be one here but because I've placed this code in the wrong place this code will never execute actually Visual Studio will tell us that because if you place uh, let me remove this breakpoint by double clicking it uh, I'll show you there's, there's a way that Visual Studio tell us that our code is not let me run it let me run the application and come back to it again if you know how to look for clue on Visual Studio you'll see a lot of clues there's a clue that is telling us here that uh, oh come on it was telling me earlier on that is an unreachable that this will never be reached that is an unreachable statement so now let's change the location of this um, code and put it on top of the return statement because so now what happened is I initiated x to be 0 at the top the first time this add item method is called within this uh, statement remember the x up to this stage the value of x is up to this stage the value of x is 0 but as soon as it gets here it had 1 to the value of x so then it returns 1 then it goes to the next statement then it calls add item method again then remember at this stage the value is still 2 uh, sorry the 1 because it returns 1 to the 1 on top so when it calls this add item again it adds 1 to the value of x again so let's see how that one works out so if I put uh, my break point here again and now let's see how that one works out uh, so you can see that it's executing the code one line at a time one line at a time so let's step into it first time we call it you see now let's see what the value of x is come on value of x is one there can you see x is one let's keep doing it what's the value of x here s equals to <laughs> What was that? Three, two. Yeah, x equals to two here. At the end, you know, it's just telling me how it's happening. So now let's step into it again, and um, let's see what the value of x is. Is here. x is three, and so on and so forth. So you can actually see that um, now we get one, two, three, and four. And uh, for example, if I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know, I never knew that um, I shouldn't place this code below the return method. I can use the uh, this debugging to actually step into my code to see. And sometimes when you have so many methods, and uh, you are calling methods from different areas of your application, you might need to know how. Um, the sequence in which this occurs because sometimes the sequence in which they occurs really matters and uh, you might experience a lot of uh, mistake maybe by calling one method before you call the next method so if you want to see the sequence in which your um, application I mean your line of code the sequence in which they actually execute so you can just uh, set breakpoint and you can use st step into you can use step into which execute the next line of code or you can use the step over which execute the next line of code without leaving the current method so it's going to execute the next line of code without leaving the current method or you can use step out which we execute the next line of code and returns to the method that called the current method <laughs> I know it's kind of um, difficult but um, it's very easy once you start uh, developing application in big time uh, you will understand how to use each one of these ones so if you don't understand what I just did here no problems no problems just leave me a comment and I'll be able to write a long text so you can read it <laughs> anyway thank you